wondering how you can become better at running your business? Entrepreneurship can be stressful. There's too much to do and not enough time. If you're isolated in your daily decisions, have no fear. Success and balance are possible. Welcome to the Small Business Answer Man podcast, where you master the art of running a successful business using practical advice from experts who want to help you succeed. Now, here's your host, Gary Wilbers. Welcome. We're glad to have you at the Small Business Answer Man podcast, the first quarter of 2023. Are you achieving your goals? Well, today I'm going to help you because we all want more sales. But the thing is, we always have to create something to get those sales. So today I've got Joe on the podcast and he's going to start the Small Business Answer Man podcast. We're going to talk about what, Joe? We're going to talk about building better proposals. Joe Ardeezer is a farmer digital agency owner of 12 years, one that he built from just himself to a team of 12. He then took his passion for sales and proposal writing and created Smart Pricing Table, an interactive proposal software. Joe, it is great to have you on the podcast. Welcome. Thanks, Gary. I'm excited to be here. Well, I'm curious because when I get small business owners and I sold my business back in 2012 and you were a digital agency and you kind of sold your business of 12 years, kind of share a little bit of your story if you with us, Joe. Yeah, well, I uh, I started my agency um, just by myself. Um, actually, due to some health issues, hired my first employee and just got addicted to having people working and pr productivity and cranking things out. Um, did a lot of proposals, um, really started kind of uh, in an immature, kind of just doing things in Google Docs, very unstructured. Um, and uh, eventually I decided, hey, I think there could be a better way. And so we, we started playing around with a, a proposal tool for my agency. And that really led to me uh, to a great passion uh, that I have today. Well, I'm excited to talk, talk about this topic because a lot of business owners and consultants and um, so many different types of businesses have to create a proposal I'll be honest, I always hate that word because I always say an agreement because what I'd rather know is that they're going to sign my agreement, you know, versus just give them a piece of paper. But we have those challenges there. So I'm curious, let's start off with is what, what have you found out and seen are some of the biggest challenges when people are writing proposals um, that's there for them? Yeah, the, uh, a few of the big ones, I'll just kind of rattle some off. One is proposals take a lot of time. And it's, I can kind of compare it to writing content for your website. Maybe mm -hmm. some of your listeners can identify with this. You, you get into WordPress or whatever, and, you, and you, you're, you're so ambitious, and then you're, you're stuck, right? Because you don't know what to write. You don't know what to describe. Um, so I'd say, you know, that, that's, a, that's a real issue. And the time component. Um, Gary, I'm sure you've had this situation where maybe you spent two, three hours on a very complex proposal that really nailed everything that your customer wanted and they ghost you, right? Right. So you put all this time in and you feel like that was for absolutely nothing. And so I think I think a lot of people can be hesitant to even write proposals. Um, they may not you know, participate in a particular opportunity because of that challenge. Um, so a few other things, um, we oftentimes don't know what we're selling, right? I love that there's a, an analogy that I connect with. It said, if there's, a, if there's a mist in the pulpit, there's a fog in the congregation. Mm. And I think this is so true. A lot of times our customers have, you know, expectation issues because we don't actually even know what we're selling. We haven't defined it. We haven't thought through it. And um, that's, that's a big one. And then maybe I'll say um, not, not charging enough that's related, you know, and I think if you don't define your service, well, you, you're not going to charge enough because you haven't thought through it. And then one of my favorite ones is, I would say is the vague vortex. Um, Gary, any guess what I have? Guess of what that means? I'm not sure. Is it just kind of that you're not really hitting in the area that they're most focused on? I what it is, what it is is when when you're vague, you often lose, right? Mm. So if you don't describe enough of what you're offering, you can all sorts of things start going wrong because now you have client management, client expectation issues. Um, you're not maintaining profitability. And all your time is getting sucked into this particular 
problem because you didn't define it. Um, and so I think a lot of that, I mean, if, if I had to say my biggest thing, it would be not giving at least a minimum level of definition to the services we're selling. Well, that makes so much sense because of course, one of the challenges we have is when we create them, we know it so well right. that we assume, which is always a bad thing when you're not the buyer, when you're the seller, you're trying to assume something, then the right. seller is unclear, they're vague, and they're really not sure all the details that go into that. So that right. makes very good sense. Yeah, yep. We we tend to get very familiar and comfortable with our own world and we forget people don't live in that world. <laughs> well, and if we do this all the time and normally I in mean, most industries they do have to send some sort of proposal before they get the work or get the business. Yeah, they may get to have that meeting, but then it's coming back and putting down what do they want? I've walked in some of those rooms myself. What, what do you think is so important for me to be able to think through my proposal system so to help me kind of get to that end result? Because ultimately the end result is them signing the agreement. Yeah, well, you know, this would be a good, maybe this is a good time to share. I have, I have a five C's to better proposals. Can I outline that for you, Gary? Sure, please. Okay, so C's, easy to remember. If you have a pen, grab it. Um, there are five things, if, if you want to create killer proposals that are have high close rates and high engagement, these five C's. The first thing is capitalize with technology. Are you using Word to create your documents or your proposals? Word or, or Google Docs is not proposal software. It doesn't have features that are consistent with proposal writing. Okay, So that's the first thing, what Jim Collins calls a technology accelerator, capitalize with technology. Second thing, and this is huge, catalog your offering. Another way of saying this is product, productizing your offering. So many times as business owners, we're creating proposals and we're not, we're, not, uh, we're not creating momentum by spelling things out in a reusable way, right? Mm. What's included? What's not included? What are some upsells to this particular line item? So catalog your offering. Uh, third one is cater to your customer. Uh, so what, what this means is uh, give your customer options. Uh, um, a lot of times, uh, you know, it, it, you get like, I, I've gotten this a lot with like electrical bids, um, done a bit of real estate. And it, I, I will ask them for three different options. And I, I'll end up with one still. And when you, when you don't give them options, it requires a lot more back and forth. And so I'm a big, uh, a big uh, uh, proponent of, optionality, right? Give them, give them upsells, give them some level of control. Cause I think that also builds trust. Okay. So far so good, Gary, I got two yeah, more. I like those. Okay. Uh, fourth C is confer with your customer. Okay. This one, this is a fun one. Let me, let me uh, do a little bit more on this one, Gary. Um, <clears throat> what I mean by this is instead of chucking a proposal over the fence, Ask for a proposal meeting. You might say, well, Joe, how do I do that? Okay, follow this exactly. You can, you can just copy me. So you have your initial sales discovery call, get, to, get information from the prospect, understand their needs. And at the end say, awesome. Well, I'd love uh, Gary to create a proposal for you. The next step in the process is I'd like to set up a 20 minute proposal review meeting. You then bring up your Calendly or calendar, whatever. You schedule the meeting right there. You don't ask them if they want a proposal review meeting. You say it's part of the process. Most of the time, they'll just go with it. And in the a rare exception that there's an issue, you just say, look, if I'm going to spend time on it, I want to be able to pitch it to you. And the reason why this is so important, and, and this is just huge for, I think, close rates, you don't just give them the proposal, Gary. As you know, you need to sell them the proposal. Yes. Here's my pitch. Here's why I set it up this way. Here's what I included. Hey, check out this potential opportunity. I didn't know if you wanted this, but I thought I'd throw it on there for you, right? You want If you want a high level of engagement, get them on the phone and walk them through it. Don't just chuck it over the fence. I love that one because when you're working with business owners, they're so busy Right. And if you, even if it's teams that you're working on, you get the team. And I've just recently did this and I had a proposal that I put together. 
But the one thing I required was let's get back together and right. sit down and go over that. Now we ended up sit down because we in the same place. You could do it again via Zoom if the they're outside of the area. But right. man, I walked out of there with business. Yeah. Yeah. And so the sales process goes up, like you said, and it's part of your process. And I love when you say that Dan Sullivan always talks about unique ability and your unique process. And that's creating a unique process. Yeah. And, and another thing is the more my prospect is talking to me, right, the less they're talking to <laughs> the competition. I like that. Yes. I also want one more quick little nugget on this point, write down ham bam. I just learned this. I, I was doing it, but I love it. Ham bam stands for have a meeting, book a meeting. In my SaaS company, after I do a free kickoff, um, I on that call, even though they're now they have a trial, they're trying out my product, I sign them up for a free trial courtesy call two weeks later. Um, which allows me to make sure that they're doing well with the product, they're engaging, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it, it allows you to just keep that pace going um, and keep, uh, keep uh, the customer going on the right track. Yeah, love that. All right, fifth C. And this is, this is probably, I mean, they're all important. You can kind of think of this as a pyramid and they all build on top of each other. But the fifth C is continuously improve. And what this means is specifically with proposals is when business does what it does and it fries you, right? We all have gone through this. Business can be painful, especially when we're first starting. Take those lessons and um, process, make them part of your process by updating your proposal. Okay, so it, for example, let's say you, you were selling social media marketing or something and you didn't make any money on that, recur that retainer. Go back to your proposal, open that line item, go to the template, open that line item and fix it. Are you not charging enough? Do you need to put another limitation? Are you not putting a fence around your work? Take those pain, take that pain, count it a blessing, okay? And turn it around and fix the issue. Um, and, and you keep doing that and after a while, you know, projects go so smooth because you're working out all the kinks. Yeah, so, I, that is a huge one because otherwise we make the same mistake and we keep doing the same thing. And then right. we're, we get even more frustrated and it creates that challenge in a business. And, you know, you got to find out and you're not going to always see it the first time or the second right. time. But now you can make that change of, okay, if I'm going to do this, it's going to change the pricing structure, what that has to be, or how I explain it to the client. Maybe they got confused and were able to make that change there to be able to give more information. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, we we use this process back at my agency. I had a web design agency for 12 years, and uh, I, I, I rarely had a problem project or a client towards the end because every time we had an issue, we'd fix it. And it just made things so smooth. You want good reviews? The proposal is the foundation of your project. You get that right. You set, you're set. you setting everything up for success and the reviews follow. Yeah, and it comes back to the expectations are set. So, right. you know, the client understands, but also then you as the deliverer of the services, you understand what you propose to them. And right. there's no that misinformation because communication is a number one challenge in business. I talk about it all the time. And part of that can be through proposals because they assume, or when you had an initial meeting, they thought they heard right. whatever it was. A proposal clarifies exactly what they're getting out of it. Right. Right. And I think a lot of people think that proposal writing is boring. Mm -hmm. It's really, uh, I'm just not going at this the right way. It just like just like with website content, if you don't know who your audience is and you don't know what you're selling, good luck writing content for your website. But if you know who your audience is and you have those stories of where you've helped people and you've killed it for them, you've turned their business around or you've helped them with a product or service, all of a sudden you write, you the, the content just flows from your fingertips. Same thing with proposal writing. If you have a system, if you've invested in it, it doesn't have to be a grind. In fact, 90% of it can be super awesome because you can make it so efficient. 
Well, and that probably comes to what you see is what um, the question I asked number two, really from the five C's that comes from that, then when I do go through that proposal writing process, and I get this system kind of as we're, we're continuously improving it, so it's never completely done, right. then, of course, that's going to create what more sales as well as, you know, client referrals that you've talked about in some of those areas? Yeah, I mean, there's, I think client referrals is great, right? So you have a, you have a good uh, proposal process, it shines, I think that naturally leads to uh, additional referrals. Um, I'd also say, um, uh, it helped a good, a good proposal system helps you maintain profitability, right? You think, you think well, this is just, they're just proposals, like we'll figure it out later. No, actually, if you're not limiting your work, if you're not putting a fence around it in your, in your service offering, you could kill your profitability. Um, another, another big one for like, you know, it, if, if you need a reason to invest in your proposal system, um, I, I, another, another huge one is just morale, right? We've all been there and we can all resonate with the idea that a proposal is the foundation. It's the start of any project. And when it goes wrong, who suffers? Yeah. right? Your client suffers, but also your team suffers, your morale, your employee retention. It's like, I can't deal with this. We keep closing these terrible deals. I'm working overtime. We're not getting paid what we should. And it's not any fun. And so a happy, happy team, happy you. I think so much of this is foundational uh, to the proposal writing process. Yeah. Well, and I think it's so important for business owners to think about because the challenge is, you hit on the big one, the profitability. Right. And that becomes the real challenge is that if you allow too much, that you, it's not clear enough. And then of course, you're kind of obligated when you're in the process with them, because are you going to make the customer happy? Or are you going to let them be unhappy? Well, if you make them happy, it's costing you a lot more money. If you make them unhappy, well, you'll right. probably never get any more business from them. Plus it may hurt you for future business with other customers and clients. Right. right. And, and this, the happy middle right between those two ditches is define what you sell. They might not always be super happy because there's a limitation, but if they agreed to it, what I found nine times out of 10, it's like, you know what? I agreed to that. And all of a sudden, Gary, you're getting paid for the overage. Imagine that. Right. Um, you're actually getting paid for the work you do. It's novel, it's crazy, but it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, well, and I love what you said too. It's so easy then that some of the options that you have, that you can put them as options that's available to a lot of times when we do a proposal, what do we do? We give them exactly what they asked for. Right. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. And another thing, one thing is that great about upsells, uh, not, not to plug my software, but, but for a moment, one thing that we, we can do with our software is um, you define the line item and then you can have upsells. Um, so for instance, going back to that social media management, maybe it's uh, you know $2,000 a month, 15 posts, but there's an upsell where you can include an additional five posts per month and that's this cost. Um, or there's a, I'll engage with your followers and their comments, right? Those are upsells. And what's great about that setup is it, specifically in our software, when you sign the contract, it shows you the line items, but it also shows you if the upsells were selected. And so you not only do you know what's included, but it's also very explicit on what's not included. And I tell you what, that saved me so much pain uh, running my agency for, for many years. Well, I love when entrepreneurs like yourself, Joe, finds a challenge, um, experience the challenge, and then go out and you create something that allows them to solve that challenge or yeah. that problem for their company and stuff. And that's exactly what you've done. As you've gone through this journey, share with us, you know, um, like all entrepreneurs, when you come up with it, you're using it yourself, but then you decide to make it a software. Um, share some of those challenges and then opportunities that it's created for you. Yeah, well, I think it's it's been helpful to see what other companies, how they would engage with it. I've had a lot of customers that do things a lot differently than, than we did back at my agency. 
Um, you know, we, we've uh, we've learned some of the um, particular needs as far as integrations. Um, we've learned about um, different formats and layouts to use. Um, so it's, it's been an incredible process. Uh, one of the things that I love about SaaS is it's kind of like a kitchen remodel. You you work. You're, it's all you you know. It's a one time thing, and things are better and better. Um, I, I've I've certainly enjoyed the the model myself. Excellent. Well, I appreciate you sharing about it because the biggest thing is, is getting our business owners and entrepreneurs to think about when you're doing a proposal, the five C's that you laid out, how are you using that to improve your business? And, you know, ultimately to me, you improve the business because it makes it more profitable and right. we all like profitable businesses versus, right. you know, we get to the end of the year and we look at our numbers and then we wonder where did our profit go this year? Right. Yep. I think that's as CEOs, as owners, that's our, one of our number thing. Number one things is to be a defender of our margins. We don't. If we don't get that right, there's no. There's no. There's no tomorrow. <laughs> and then the other question, and I'm sure this is, but just if anybody's thinking this, um, try to ask those type of questions. It works for more than just agencies, right? You are a digital agency, and so yeah. you have other services that are using the software too. Absolutely. Um, I, the the genesis was from my own agency, but there's really, um, check out smartpricingtable.com. And there I have sample proposals on there. There's nothing that's really terribly agency specific. Um, I will say, uh, you know, if, if you write proposals and it's not enjoyable, um, I do offer a free demo. I love connecting with prospects and potential users. And I like to personalize that demo. So if you've been kind of struggling with how to set up your proposal, thinking through things, if, if you've identified with some of the principles in this uh, this podcast, um, I, I, I like to do a little bit of consulting during that demo as well. Um, and I also, I think, uh, Gary, we talked about this maybe before the yeah. show, but I'm happy to give a, a nice little kickback to anyone from the show. You mentioned um, uh, Gary Wilbur's podcast, and I'll give you half off your first two months after the free trial. Yeah. So you get a free trial, plus you get half off your first two months. So check that out. If it's an area that you need to improve in your business, what we're talking about this whole first quarter, Joe, has been about how can I improve my business? Because the changes we make now last for the next nine or 10 months throughout this process. And then it doesn't just end at the end of the year. It goes into the next year. And what I've been trying to really have my entrepreneurs and business owners think about what are those changes I need to make? And maybe this is one of those areas. And that's why I wanted to have Joe on. It's not a typical topic that, you know, we bring up, but it's something that I would say 70% of businesses do all the time that they do some sort of proposals. You know, if you're not a retail organization, a lot of times you have to propose what you're going to provide um, before you provide that service. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a boring part of the business, but it's so, so vital. Yeah. Well, Joe, I appreciate you coming on again. It's smartpricingtable.com. We'll have it all in show notes. We'll have his 50% um, off as well as his 30 day trial. So you can link to that to be able to get that. Just know that's available. We'll have all that in show notes at smallbusinessanswerman.biz, B-I-Z. So check that out with the show notes if you're interested in it. Joe, I really appreciate you being on the podcast, but I have one more question I have to get from you. And that I like asking every guest this question is what is your best business tip or advice that you would give to my business owners and entrepreneurs that are listening to the podcast? That was a hard question, Gary. I had to think on that a bit. I started with something practical, but then I read it again. It said your best business tip. And here's what I'd say. Um, back when I owned an agency, I uh, I subscribed to something. I paid for something that would help it help myself. It was an agency playbook, and I also joined an agency mastermind. I can look back at my agency's uh, past and see that as a massive milestone in my development and in the growth of our agency. Now, as a SaaS product owner, I have a uh, I'm part of this thing called a SaaS Academy, and it's the the whole big idea is. Find that group, find your trade, your industry, and find the group, find the leader, the coach who's leading the charge with all people just like you. Get the playbooks, invest in yourself. It's one of the best things I've ever done. Well, and I promise my listeners, I did not set Joe up for that uh, answer. But you know, I am a small business 
coach as well as have that mastermind. So if you're a small business owner and you're not finding that in your area, I tell you, it makes a difference. I know with the members I currently have, it's kind of like a tribe. It's people understand each other because the challenges we go through as business owners and entrepreneurs, we need that help. And we need to realize we're not the only one going through those challenges. And that's the biggest thing I get is my business owners say all the time, say, well, I didn't realize they have employee problems too. Well, guess what? It's not just you, it's others too. Then the other is the little tidbits that you get, just like what you shared with us on the podcast. That's why people listen to podcasts is you get to learn other things that you can now implement into your business. So I really appreciate you sharing that, Joe, because I am a believer in that. I myself back in the early 90s, I make myself sound old now, but I was in business in the 90s. And that was probably my greatest secret to my success is that I was willing to get coached. Yeah. Um, and that helped my business grow and allowed me to continue to grow myself. So I think that's a great one. Joe, right. thank you again for being on the podcast. Can't appreciate enough your time. Awesome. Thank you, Gary. I had a great time. Appreciate it. Well, I want to always tell you, take action when we get done with a podcast, because you could listen to great information. My action for you is, are you writing proposals in your company? If you are, then think about what your proposals need to have. Maybe go to Joe's website and check out his website so you can get some ideas. Maybe set up that call. You can learn from him. You don't have to get the software right off. He gives you a capability to try it out first, but decide how can you improve that? Because you're either leaving money on the table or you're not offering it. So then you're leaving money on the table too. And the way we become a more profitable business is getting more money into our coffers from our clients and stuff in a very positive way, taking care of them, of course, in that method. So come back next week. We'll have another great guest and we'll continue this segment on this first quarter of how can you improve your business to get more profit into your business? Make it a great day. Thanks for joining me. That's all the time we have for this week. To continue your journey, head over to smallbusinessanswerman.biz to access the tools and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with someone who would benefit from listening. That's smallbusinessanswerman.biz. Until next time, remember, when you find the right solutions, your business grows and you get your time back.